Have you ever tried to export a logo design file and it looks a little pixelated? Well, this is the video for you. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan, if you have not been here before. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna jump right into the video and teach you how to export high quality logo design files in Adobe Illustrator. I'm starting by showing you guys an actual real life client project that I'm working on. And as you can see, the artboard is crazy it's messy but i want to be real with you guys when i'm designing logos i look kind of messy with it so this is what it looks like but i want to show you how to export the final logos and how to like prepare the logo for export so this is the final logo for the primary i have it in these two different color options so i'm going to make sure this is grouped first by selecting everything and hitting command g on my keyboard and what we're going to do is create a new document. So I went file new and honestly, the sizing right now doesn't matter too much as long as you have like a good amount of um, 300 PPI and this is an A4 document. So it's a pretty big document, but this is perfect to start with. Sometimes I even start with this, but really the exporting process is what allows you to change the quality of everything. So I'm gonna type in my client's name. I'm gonna name this file final logos and we're gonna create. Now we have that here. I'm gonna go back and select these two primary logos and hit command C to copy. And then we're gonna go command paste to paste it in here. And as you can see, I was most likely designing on a bigger page or a bigger document than this since these are a bit bigger, but we can shrink them. It's not going to affect anything um, because the exporting process, like I said, is what can potentially affect your resolution. So we have these two in here and now I'm going to walk you through the steps on how I like to prepare a logo for exporting. And this is a perfect example one because this is a bit more detailed. As you can see, we have a lot of um, artwork in here. So I'm going to show you all the steps that I like to take. First off, let's create an artboard around this logo. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to select the artboard icon and then double click on here. I'm going to do the same thing down here, but I'm just going to click once on my keyboard. Okay, so now that we have the logos in their individual artboards, we're going to prepare it for exporting. So what I mean by that is, as you can see, none of this is outlined. None of it is kind of just like sealed and secured for quality export. So first step is to select your entire logo. And now we're going to go to object, path, outline stroke. After we do that, we're going to go to type, create outlines. So that just made my type, my typography, my font, everything into a shape instead of just having it there where if the client were to open this up on their illustrator, if I had to send it to somebody, the, the typography would not be a shape. It would be, um, they would have to install the font on their computer and it would just be a little bit of a different process. So I like to just seal everything in, make sure it's a shape before I export. So I like to do that. Now, if it was a logo without artwork, what I typically would do, and I'll show you an example by just copying this over here. And then let's make sure this is not grouped with that. So if it was like this with no artwork, then I typically would go over here to Pathfinder, which if you can't find Pathfinder, just go to Window and you can find it down here. Um, but when I I would select everything and then I would click on Unite. Now that just makes everything one shape altogether. But because this is a really um, detailed artwork, that's not gonna work. If I did that, it would look like this. Um, it just wouldn't work that way. So can't really do it over here. Let's make sure this is grouped still. Um, but I would do that for typography. And then I also would go to Object, Compound Path and Make. Um, that just like really secures your logo in for quality to make sure that you don't have any issues when it goes when you scale it and things like that. So for this logo though that has a little more detail, um, I typically would leave it at that where I just outline the stroke and then also outline my type. Um, but if you wanted one extra step just to make sure that like all the strokes and everything are 
retained and like secured and stuff, what you could do is go to object, expand appearance, and that's just going to make sure that it's all like one stroke and it's like retained that way. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But those are the steps I take to prepare it for exporting to make sure that it maintains its quality. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing down here for that after. But I wanted to show you guys one other thing because I think this is where people get confused with like the pixelation and maybe it just doesn't look good even when you're in your illustrator. But if I zoom in, um, like all the way, if I just keep on going, those trees look crazy when you zoom in. But even if I were to zoom in like this, 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 keep going, there's no pixelation. Um, now, if you're seeing pixelation when you're in Adobe Illustrator, that is most likely because you're using an image and not a vector. Um, so if you just dragged an image in from flat icon or, um, let's say Google images and you didn't image trace it or you didn't turn it into a vector, it's going to be pixelated before you even export. So make sure that of that. And then also if you accidentally, or if maybe you did this as like a step that you thought would help, if you accidentally went to object rasterize, um, which sometimes people do this when they're exporting, but if you do that, that's going to change it to an image and not a vector, which what I mean by that is when I keep scrolling, it's going to have that pixelation, um, which is fine. Like, honestly, if your client's not going to use it on a large scale format, then you can export it rasterized. But I'm going to show you guys how to export not only the vectorized graphic, but also the image based graphic, which is like PNG and JPEG. Um, so keep that in mind. That could be why you're seeing pixelation. Um, but that is, those are the steps I take to prepare it for exporting. So now let's move on to how to actually export it. We're going to go to file and export and export for screens. Now keep in mind, every artboard that you have is going to be an individual file. So the more artboards you have, the more files you're going to be exporting, especially if you go to file export for screens. And typically that is needed for all the different color variations of your logo. You want to export each one individually. So I'm going to go export for screens and it's going to open this up for me. And I already renamed these logo files and I like to name them primary logo and the color. Um, sometimes I will do the client's initials in the front. Um, but this is perfect, so I already renamed those, but you can always type in here and rename them that way. Um, and then here's some of the settings that are important. So we have where we're going to be exporting this to, which I've already set this up to go into my client's um, final logos folder, which is perfect. So we're going to keep it that way. And then we also have open location after export. So this is just going to show us what we exported right after I click export artboard down here. And then I also like to create subfolders based on the format. So I like to see my PNG folder, my SVG folder, JPEG folder, etc, etc. So you can change it to scale if you wanted it to export based on the size of the logo. That would work too, but I typically like to do format. And just make sure that you always have multiple files select if you want these to be individual files, like I mentioned. You can have it export all on one, which would be a single file here, um, but typically multiple files is needed for all different logos. So here is where we can select all the formats. Now they have all of these options here. So if I click in, we'll see PNG, SVG, WebP, all the things we need. So SVG is going to export this as a vector. And something to keep in mind is that I like to send my clients the vectorized logo just so they have something with the highest quality that they can absolutely have because a vector is is not going to be able to be opened on everything, but they can add this like into their Canva or more um programs where they can actually change the color if they needed to. So I do like to provide my clients the SVG just so they have it. And then probably one of the most important ones is PNG. PNG is the exporting format that will keep a transparent background for the logo. And I would say this is typically the most important for where the clients can add their logo to like a 
graphic or on their website without that white background. So PNG is important. And as you can see, we have PNG and PNG8. PNG8 just maintains more of the color profiles. So if you have a very color heavy logo, I would suggest PNG8. And right underneath scale, we have all these options. Now, I would say there's really no right or wrong way to do this. It's all dependent on the size and the scale the client needs. But I know that in my experience, every client uses their logo differently. There's some clients that might need to get this really huge printed on like signage, which typically the printing companies will require like the vectorized um, image, which is why I like to provide the SVG um, and also like to provide PDFs as well. Um, but these are, it's really up to what your client's going to be using it for. Um, you could also do like bunch of different sizes if you wanted to pr provide them different widths of everything you could do that um, but I always like to export it based on resolution because I know that the original document we used here was a 300 ppi document so I know that um, if I do that it's going to maintain the quality that I'm seeing here um, sometimes I'll do 400 just to make sure I'm gonna export both for you to see kind of the difference um, so I'm gonna go to add scale PNG or we're going to go to resolution changes to PNG 8 and let's do a 400 PPI resolution you know what let's do 600 just so I can show you the difference between the 300 and 600 and the, how big that file really is um, and then I also like to export a JPEG just so they have it um, and I typically will keep that at like 300 to 400 PPI and then I also like to export a PDF just so they have it in case they wanted to like attach it on something to show someone or sometimes a PDF is needed for like printing. Um, and then I go to the settings wheel here to double check my PDF settings, which is high quality print, which is perfect. So I'm going to save those settings and this looks perfect. This is exactly what I need. So we are going to export the artboard. And I'm going to replace, I already did this earlier, but I wanted to like redo it to show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to click replace and now it just up shows me exactly what we just did. So um, if I click in here, it'll have those PDF options. If I click in here, it'll have my JPEG ones. Um, so that's perfect. And then the SVG, like I said, is the vectorized. So if I zoom in really, really close nothing is pixelated because it is not an image, it is a vector. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind. You can provide them that so they have the highest quality. Um, but let's check out my PNG options. I want to show you guys the difference between the 300 and 600. So I'm pretty sure this one um, we can kind of scroll in and as we keep scrolling we can see that it starts to get that pixelated edge. But that is because this is now an image and as soon as we pass that 300 ppi mark we're going to see those that pixelation so now let me open up the 600 and i do feel like we can scroll probably a little more before we see the pixelation so there's not a huge difference honestly between 600 and 300 but if you are seeing that pixelation it's normal for images um, just make sure that you have that vectorized uh, file just so they have an option without any pixelation, um, especially for like printing and stuff like that. But most of the time they're going to be using their logo at like a size like this or smaller and it looks super crisp and clear and they're not going to have to really blow it up and scroll in like that. If they are going to be doing that, they're most likely going to be sending an SVG to get printed in that quality. So that is typically how I export my logo files. I like to have them in the formats and um, sometimes I like to have them in the formats within the folder of like primary logo, secondary logo, submark. But just having them in those formats really helps when I drag them into Google Drive to then send them to my clients. And these are the file types I typically always send. So I hope that was helpful. Like I said, if you're rasterizing your logo or if you're if it's not vectorized and things like that it could affect the pixelation and the quality but that's normal when you are exporting in an image based um, logo so don't stress too much if you zoom in and you see that pixelation that's normal because of the resolution 
but you won't have that on any sort of vectorized graphic. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you. I know that it can be frustrating when you are at the end of the project and you're trying to export your files, but for some reason they're looking pixelated or not as perfect as you want them. So I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, I would appreciate it so much if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below and I will see you in my next one.